I like to coach him, but they cook for me personally, not from the cafe so much, because everything is spicy. And um, then I went to Jay, and they gave me Prabhupada's Prashadam on his birthday. I couldn't eat it. I couldn't eat any of it. I gave it all to the way, and it made me sick. You know, too much, too much light, too much salt, too much oil, right? And too much sugar. <laughs> and um, where else did I go? Then I went to Mumbai. No. Actually, today I was in Mumbai, and also they had this buffet for lunch, and they gave me Mahaprasad. Same thing. Too much spice, too much oil, too much salt, and too much sugar. <laughs> so sometimes I just want to eat pizza. <laughs> just plain, simple, little olives, little uh, pineapple, little cheese, oregano, and salt. Right? Even, even when I make the pizza sauce, I put chili in it, but you wouldn't know, because it's tasty, it's not spicy. Right? Very nice. Delicious. So I promise, if we do this special event, we can do it not just one day, two days, three days. Maybe we can do it Friday, Saturday, Sunday, like that. Right? You think so? You think we can do that? But I'm not going to ask Madhiji to organize it. You are all going to organize it, okay? One, one will write the letters to the temple, the other one will make the, uh, what they call it, the course, what we're going to do. It's going to be a fun, a fun week, weekend. Not, not always hammer, 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 hammer with, um, Philosophy, 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 philosophy. No, it doesn't have to be like that. Prabhupada, when he gave class, he didn't just do philosophy. He tells stories. You remember? You've read that? You've seen that? Prabhupada, he tells stories. He's not. <laughs> when I was a little boy, I was very naughty. I wanted to have a gun. And my father said, because uh, he, this is what happened. He'd get very upset, starts crying, and throws himself on the ground. He said, his father said, what's, what's wrong? What's wrong? I want to have a gun. Okay, daddy buys him a gun. He has a gun in one hand, and then he throws himself on the ground again, kicking his legs. And his father said, what's wrong? I just put you a gun. He said, I want one for this hand. <laughs> so he wanted two. <laughs> so Prabhupada was also was a bit naughty in, when he was little. And he was always playing tricks on his mother, hiding, isn't it? He'd say, um, his sisters were sitting there, and the mother would come in, she would say, Oh, where is Abai? Oh, we don't know. We don't know where Abai is. And they're looking everywhere in the house, underneath the table, in the cupboard. And she was saying, Gorang, come on, you help me find my boy. They're okay, looking everywhere, isn't it? And then all of a sudden, the sister say, I think he's under there. He was under the table. And, and mother pulls, pulls him up. Oh, oh boy, you are such a naughty boy. But he didn't want to go to school, right? He didn't want to go to school when he was little. My son also didn't want to go to school. He was running away, doing all kinds of tricks, so he didn't have to go to school. So Prabhupada was like that too. And he sits, tells the stories, and he's always laughing, laughing. So he wasn't always just philosophy, you know, and heavy philosophy. No, he was very fun-loving and caring as well. Our Srila Prabhupada. A friend to all. 
And that, that's the part I remember the most. The Srila Prabhupada, special things like that. There's one special um, pastime. The devotees ask me this, what is the favourite pastimes of Prabhupada for you? Well, we were in Mayapur in um, 1975, and at that time we only had a very, very small temple. You know in Mayapur how they have that little, um, in the temple room, Prabhupada Samadhi, I mean Prabhupada's uh, Yasa Sana is there, and off to this side there's a shop, huh? and it has the dioramas on the wall and you walk around. That used to be the temple. A little, a little bit bigger than that. I think uh, where Prabhupada's Vyasa Sun is now, that actually was made into a, like a square and that was a, the deity room. And so uh, we, we used to all go to the temple, that's a long time ago, 1975, there was no build, building such yet. Prabhupada's building was there, but it wasn't totally finished. And this long building, that wasn't there. And so we all went there every morning, we'd go for RT in the class. So one morning, Prabhupada decided he's going to do something special. So we used to, we used to when the, uh, the reading of the deities were finished, we'd do kirtan and we'd go around. Three times around. Mm -hmm. But on th this morning, because Prabhupada, when he came around, he'd ring the bell. You know, in my poor, they have a bell? Mm -hmm. And sometimes they let you ring it. Sometimes. <laughs> and um, so we started going around, and Prabhupada came to the bell, and he started ringing it. Dun, 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 dun. And all the devotees were smiling. And they were going, Prabhupada, Prabhupada, Prabhupada. And so the, the, th the second time we went around, all the devotees knew that he was going to come and ring the bell. So they, when he got that far, they run over the other side and line up so that they could be there, the first one in front. And so each time he'd come around, he would ring that bell. Prabhupada, 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 all the devotees. And each time, he had the biggest smile on his face. You can bring it up on the, in your YouTube. And uh, so each time he'd ring that bell more. Each time. Because the more he rang it, the more ecstatic the devotees were getting. Bravo, bud, bravo, bud, bravo, bud, bravo, bud. Like this. And he did it three times, and then he did it four times. By the time he did it the four times, the devotees were having tears in their eyes and louder and louder, Prabhupada, 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 and Prabhupada's smile would get bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's my favorite, my very most favorite pastime I share with you. There's many, many special events. One time Prabhupada, we went to um, Sweden to see Srila Prabhupada, and it was last year, in September was the 50th anniversary of Prabhupada coming to Sweden. And the one thing I remember the most was Prabhupada went to the Uppsala University and we were giving, he was giving a talk about first class men, second class men, third class men and fourth class men. So Prabhupada was explaining what a first class man is what a second class man is, third class, and the fourth class. And this man got up, stood up, and he said, And you, what class are you? And Prabhupada said, Me, I am the servant of the servant of the servant. I am fifth class man. And that man, he immediately swallowed up, except him. he didn't say anything more. You understand? Fifth class one. Because Prabhupada is so humble. He didn't consider that I am Brahman, I am Kasatriya, I am Vaishya, 
not even children. I'm fifth class man. So, so humble. Right? How many of, it, of us would say that? No? Not many. Not many. When Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was here, he was preaching that you cannot be Brahmin by birth. You have to be Brahmin by quality. And so all the Brahmins, they got so mad. They one time they tried to, was it to kill him? And so one of his disciples said, Maharaj, quickly come with me, because the crowd was getting really boisterous. And he said, you must come with me now. And they ran away, ran off, because the, the Brahmins, they were all starting to chase after them. And so the boy, he said, quickly, Maharaj, we have to change clothes. So back to Sanatra Sarah's body, put the white clothes on. And the boy put the saffron clothes on. And he ran away. So all the crowd was following him. And he told Guru Maharaj, run in that direction. Right? And they so they're looking and they're seeing white dirty. I think, oh, I said, oh look, there he is. He's saffron dirty. You know? Anyway, when they caught him, they realized it wasn't, that wasn't him. So it was sometimes very difficult for back to Siddhanta Saraswati in that way, because the Brahmins were very angry and envious of him, because he spoke the truth. And they wanted to be Brahmin by birth. But if you want to be a Brahmin, you have to be qualified. Just like the father's a doctor, Sometimes even a doctor will have a child that's a little bit not all there, right? So he can't say, well, he's a doctor too, and everyone will say, well, well, your son, he's, you know, not very smart, how can he be a doctor? To go, everyone knows you have to go to the university, study, lots and lots of practice to become a doctor. Even in some countries, if you become a doctor in India, if you go to Australia, one oh, no, you cannot be a doctor here. You have to go back to school for five more years. It's getting a little less now because, um, like, to be a nurse, that is lots of years of study, and in India, there's lots of nurses, but they would never accept a nurse from India to come to Australia, but now, because they have hardly any nurses, now they're accepting. Even they don't have the same credentials as the people in the different countries, because they have a higher standard of study than that. So, they are allowing that now. But imagine if you said, okay, I am a... Uh, Oh, I am a doctor. My son is a doctor too. And the son goes in and starts chopping up the, the people. <laughs> well, I'm a doctor. <laughs> hang on a minute, hang on a minute. You're not going to cut off my leg? I'm a doctor, I can do it. <laughs> not possible, is it? So everyone should be Brahmin by quality, not by birth. Same with us all. You know, quality. You cannot be good at something unless you have quality or consciousness. Like cleaning. Prabhupada said, cleanliness is not to godliness. Is that? And then after some time, he changed it and he said, cleanliness is godliness. Understand? Mm -hmm. Cleanliness is godliness. And one time, Prabhupada came to Mayapur and he always told Jayapataka Maharaj and the other devotees, you keep Mayapur clean, right? And one time he just came by chance and they were thinking, oh, we have everything so clean. Prabhupada will never find any paper here. And guess what? He found one, pa one paper, one paper. And he said, you keep Maya poor clean. 
Mm. Now your, your temple is pretty nice, but I bet I can go and find some papers. <laughs> so all together, I know the ladies are very good, and I don't want only the ladies to do it. I have to talk to that temple president and say that the men have to learn to be clean. Because I walked around. Oh, look at that. I went over down there to the balcony, and I looked over. Oh, look at that. Right? So I think it's very good if the men keep, keep all the outside clean. Isn't it? And the ladies, they can keep the inside clean. The inside's not so bad because you made it nice. When I go to a temple, I don't ask someone, can I go in there? I just walk in and I look under the benches and I look in the cupboards. Right? And I went to the kitchen and I went to the powerful and there you went and I went to the store room. And I looked in the fridge even. And guess what? Everything was clean. <laughs> Except for the blue, the blue rubbish bin. When you go in the door, that blue rubbish bin, twice now I've said, oh, come here, can you go and clean that up? And so someone has to go and clean that up when I come around the next time. There's a few more down there. Right? So this is, this is godliness, cleanliness. So Krishna, no, Radharani's coming. It's her birthday. And what was Radharani doing? What was Radharani always doing with her friends? What was Radharani? Hmm? Serving Krishna. Serving Krishna. Serving Krishna. But how were they serving Krishna? Cooking. Cooking? How about cleaning? They said that the, the gopis cleaned, cleaned so much that even when there was no dirt, they'd still clean. Because they wanted it so much that everything was clean for Krishna. Because this is not our home, is it? It's Krishna's home. So if I go into your house, if you know where I'm coming, are you going to have a clean house? You're not. <laughs> You say, oh my God, Mother Sarada's coming. <laughs> She's walking around and finding every little piece of paper. Huh? If you are not coming, then also I'm supposed to clean up. Yes, that's right. So once you, you get used to that, you keep everything clean, then you don't have to get embarrassed when someone comes to the door and, and says, hello, can I come in? Your house will be clean, isn't it? You be conscious, your house will be clean all the time. You don't have to worry about if you have a surprise visit, doesn't it? So if I come to your house tomorrow, everything clean? Yes, that's good. Yours? Mataji's? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. No? I have the kids. No, you get the maid. You can't walk. You? Everything clean? You? No? No, oh, I'm going to come and visit your house tomorrow. <laughs> Pretty much Everything clean? Yeah? You? 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 But if I went, if I went to the Brahmacharya Ashram, do you think that would be clean? Maybe. Maybe some. Yeah. One time I went to Punjabi Bhag Temple. I used to go there. And and they opened the Govindas. Everything was very clean. But one, one time, Gopal Krishna Maharaj, when I was in Vrindavan in 2015, it was the 40th anniversary of the installation of um, Krishna Balaram. And so, I went back, it was 40 years. And Gopal Krishna Maharaj came up to me. I was thinking, I was already thinking about it. And he said, are you going to Punjabi Bar? And I said, Mar I said, do you want me to go there, Maharaj? And he said, yes. And I said, I was thinking about it. He said, don't worry, I'll tell them that you're coming. But you know what happened? 
he didn't tell them. And I think he, he wanted me to go there for that reason. So I came there and I, they said, oh, you sit here. Down says, I said, is Rukmini here? That's a temple present. And they said, um, just wait here, he will come. And I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm hungry, right? And then the devotee, I said, um, come. I said, did you tell Rukmini Prabhu that Surabhi Mataji is here? I said, he knows me. And he went away, he said, oh, oh, wait. And, he, and then all of a sudden Rukmini appeared. He said, oh my God, Surabhi Mataji, it's you. He said, I didn't know it was you. Not that you should get, keep your guests waiting. Not? No. Someone comes to your house, they're sitting there and you, you are doing this, doing that, cooking. You didn't give them any water. And after some time, they go, what are they doing? I'm just sitting here all the time. You know, nothing. Oh, I, I think we should go. And they will get up and they will leave. And you come back out and you've got all these nice and shadow. But your guests are gone because you left them sitting there for so long. But I didn't go. And he came and he said, I'm really sorry, Madhuji Sabami, I didn't know it was you. And I said, oh, that's all right. But actually, I didn't really like the guy to sit there for so long. Anyway, so I said, didn't Gopal Krishna Maharaj tell you I was coming? He told me he was going to tell his servant that to ring them and tell them that I was coming. Right? That if they knew I was coming, they would have been cleaning. So he tricked them. Because I think he knew that sometimes the temple was dirty. So the first day I was there, they asked me to give class. And I said, I'm just going to go on a walk. So I went on a walk and I came back and I gave class. And then they, then they said, will you give class again tomorrow, Mother Shrava? And I said, okay. And so I decided that I should just stay, stay in the complex, not go on a walk, just in case I didn't get back on time. I think, I think that the day before, I just got back on time. <laughs> and anyway, so I, when I was doing my japa, because I do my japa early in the morning, right? I must have had one or two left after Arti. And then I just started walking around and I thought, oh, this place is not very clean. This is unusual. They used to have their temple clean that I can remember. And there was all this kind of things stored there and it was thinking oh, all had dirt all over it and everywhere and it would be dirt. And I remember the day before I'd gone upstairs and they had these offices and there was big piles of paper like this. And, and I, when I had prasadam and the prasadam room, oh, it wasn't very clean. And so then I thought, oh, let me go into Govindas. When I came here last time, a few years ago, they just made Govindas. So I'm hearing something in the background, and I, I, I called out, um, Hare Krishna, is anyone there? And they were making so much noise they didn't hear me. Um, and so I, I, I bent over the bench, and then by calling out, oh, when I bent over the bench, I seen the floor. Papers, dirt, Wow, terrible. I'm thinking, my God, how can they serve the people with all that mess there, right? And then the floor was dirty. And I thought, I think I have to say something to them. So when I gave the class, at the end of the class, I told them, well, I have to tell you something. I'm very surprised, but your temple is very dirty. And I said, well, I think this is what you should do. The devotees who work in the office, they've got to clean the offices. The devotees who serve the prasadam, they've got to, serve, they've got to clean the prasadam room. And the pajaris, they have to make sure the altar's clean. The devotees who are doing the temple 
have to do a better job because I can see that this bird, that bird, you know, the one like that. Oh, look at that. And um, and then I said, uh, okay, Chan, by the cooks. And then I said, and brahmacharis, I don't need to go into your room and have a look. I know. <laughs> and then I said, and the grihastas, they can do all the outside. Right? And everyone was laughing and happy and they said, thank you very much. We, d we didn't even realize our temple was dirty. I'm glad you came and showed us. But not only that temple, many temples I've done this, many. And um, so then I went back to Australia and it was um, also in Australia, also another festival. I think it was for Gornitai, installation of Gornitai. And uh, the devotees picked me up at the airport and there was a, a devotee from India in the front seat I was sitting in the back. And I said, we had a conversation. I said, where are you from? And he said, I'm from India. I said, which part? And he said, um, oh, I'm from Delhi. And I said, oh, yes, I, I know the devotees in Delhi. And he said, he said, yes, I was just in Punjabi Bagh. And I said, oh, how are the devotees? He said, they were happy. And I said, what were they doing? They said, he said, they were cleaning. <laughs> because Mother Sarabi told us our temple was dirty. And that touched my heart because they took me seriously. You see? So if you're going to give someone good advice, and if they take it seriously, it really touches your heart, doesn't it? So I know from that time that the Punjabi Bank they will keep the temple clean. And it's the same same with um, chant, you know, how I tell, encourage you all to get up before Mogulati and chant some rounds. Well, I was just in um, Mayapur this year for the festival and I was staying with a, um, a son with his mother. His mother was 75 years old, no, older than me, 78 years old, and she was a doctor. You know? And she was still going to the clinic and practicing you know, doctors. Many at the, at the clinic, at the temple, at the hospital. She was doing two, three days a week. Older well, lady, right? amazing. Right? She didn't want to retire. So she was very capable, and she and she was blind in one eye, blind in one eye, and still she was helping the people. Right? And so um, there was a little shop nearby. Have you been to that rehearsal section? Not on, not on the one further away from the temple. Not the one near Prabhupada's Samadhi. There's another one when you go. Yeah, the other side, near near uh, Shurya. You go past Shurya. There's a big complex there, and there's a little shop. It's actually a very good shop. They has everything. Everything's got two, three stories. You can go there and get everything from the west. You know, cranberries. Cranberries are very good for ladies when you have the um, the incontinence. So you take cranberries and it takes it away. And the last time I was there, I had that problem. So I had cranberries, I had to have some cranberries. And I went there to the shop and they had American sun-dried cranberries. So it's a very good shop. Anyway, when I was in the shop, there was one tall boy. And he said, oh, you are Mother Surabi? And I said, yes, yes, where are you from? And he said, I'm from Kazakhstan. And he said, I said, oh yeah, I went to Kazakhstan. And he said, I know. He said, you were talking about getting up early and chanting your rounds before Mogulati. He said, before, I had so much trouble with my rounds because I'm doing the deity worship, the Pajari, on the Pajari. Oh, I had so much to do. And he said, it was always so stressful for me. But he said, from that day, 
I've been chanting my rounds before Mogalati, and now everything is really good. I don't have stress anymore. And I said, oh my God. I said, you don't know how much that means to me, that you took that so seriously. You see? So if you want to please someone, then do what they ask. They're telling you because they've experienced it, right? You teach by example problems. So I can't tell you, you get up and try to chance some round before Mongolati and you come knocking on my door at, at five o'clock in the morning and all you can hear is <laughs> Isn't it? You're going to take me serious because you know I get up early, right? I'm not, I don't go into the temple so early because I, I don't know what time the temple opens. In, in that Melbourne, you can go there at 3.30 in the morning and chant your rounds in the temple. But not every temple is like that. So I, I chant in my way. I come down around 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. What's that? From 4 to the Buddhist side chanting. From 4. Yeah, very nice. That makes me very happy. Because whenever the devotees ask me for their blessings, you know what I do. I bless you. I'm on the head. I'll turn around. I bless you that you may get up before Mongolati and chant some rounds because they will be the best ones. And now in my home, when you go there for the festival, so many devotees are in the temple by 3.30 and chanting their rounds. Yeah. One day I asked these two devotees after Mongolati and that I was walking and these two devotees are walking along and they're talking to me. And I said, how many rounds have you chanted? Eleven. And the other one said, fourteen. I said, wow, who told you that? They said, Japata Maharaj told us that we should chant rounds before Mongolati. So there you go. So don't think that you're the only devotees in the world that's giving you that blessings. Many, many devotees. I don't give any other blessing. I bless you that you may become a good mother, have ten children. Oh, I bless you that you may get up before Mongolati and chant some rounds because they will be your best ones. One time I was in Mayapur, all these Russian devotees came, a group of about six of them. And they said, Mataji, can you give us your blessings? And I said, I bless you that you may get up before Mongolati and chant surrounds, because they will be your best ones. And then two days later, they all ran up to me and they said, Mataji, you are all right. They experienced it. So they said there's an old saying that, you know, you, unless you take that endeavor, you're not going to experience. We can talk to a black in the face, say, please do this, please do this. But if you don't try it, you're never going to know. No? You'll never, never know unless you go. <laughs> so. Give it a try. How many of you are chanting before Mongolati? How many? None? But I've been here a few days. I've been encouraging you for a few days now. And no one's tried it. Just maybe. Maybe. There's an old saying, the proof in the pudding is in the eating. I can sit there and go, oh, this pudding is so delicious, right? But unless you try it, how are you going to know? Isn't it? You'll never, never know. Unless you get that spoon and try it, then you'll know. She was right. This is so delicious, right? So this is nectar, chanting these rounds before Mongolati. It frees you. It frees you up to do so many more things. It frees you to read, right? 
and, and you you be very regulated. You do, do this, that, this, and then you do more Galati, and then you chant some more rounds. Maybe you're finished by six o'clock. Then you can read for half an hour, three quarters of an hour, depending on what time the children get up. Mm -hmm. How many of you have the children grown up already? The children are already grown up. How old is your daughter? Oh, grown up and married, no excuse. Both my daughters married. Three daughters? Two daughters married? You can do it. What's it? One daughter? She's married? You can do it. Who else has children that are Oh, my daughter already married. Already married. No excuses for you all, right? You get up early and you chant some rounds before we go out here. Right? Okay? Yes. You can do it. Yes. You have to keep on telling yourself, I can do this. Yes. Right? Yes. Isn't it? And your whole life will change. You'll become more relaxed, more happier. You'll be walking around with the glory. Oh yes, you are glory. Right? Because the more you surrender to Krishna, the more happier you become, then you glow. It isn't it right. You will glow. Hmm? Four rounds before Mangalarati? Four rounds before Mangalarati? That's very good. And I, I think you can do six. Yeah. <laughs> Try to increase. Yeah, once you get the once you get the taste. Actually, I was in um, in New Jane, and because I get up early, I start opening up the curtains, and I looked, and here's all these madhijis inside this room. On the other side, there's a Nichananda. One, the Guranga one, and I looked across and here's all these Madhichis sitting there chanting their rooms. I go, oh my God, this is amazing. Right? I might tell people that, but actually seeing it doesn't always happen. And so in the Mongolati, I, in the Mongolati, I said, are you one of those ladies that I seen chanting in that room? And she said, yes. And I said, who told you to do that? And she said, Back to dear Damodar Maharaj, he, he told us that we should get all our rounds done before we eat anything. Right? So they, they get up at one o'clock in the morning. One o'clock. And they chant all the rounds, and Maharaj is there with them all, with all his disciples. He here sits, and all of them chant together. Right? So before they even think about eating, that they chanted all their rounds. Yeah. And he, he's a very, very happy person. You've met him? Yeah, very happy person. Bhakti Yeah, Bhakti Tita Maharaj's disciple, his sannyas disciple. Okay, so I thought today, seeing it turned out like this, that if you have any questions, do any of you have any questions? Come on. Anything that you, anything that has been bothering you, or anything that uh, you've been dwelling on, then don't be afraid. I'll, I'll answer these questions. Whatever questions you have, I've been through a lot in my life. I'm sure you I could answer your questions. I mean, uh, like anybody will say, we can't force this, we can't force this. 
So how do uh, they don't for mind forcing them for their education career? They for that they don't mind. They get up any time. Everything everything is done. But as far as when we tell for the spiritual activities like uh, to get up to chant, they say no, we can't force. So sometimes I fall short. Uh, like, I do tell them in my mind that you force for other activities, but for this you feel you can't force. Can you please throw like that much? What you should do yeah. to help them. Mm -hmm. Well, like they say, the old saying is you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Mm -hmm. Right? So, to be able to do this, follow this process, you have to have some kind of inspiration. In the old days, it was just no question. You joined the temple, from day one, you chanted 16 rounds. And it, we all chanted together in the morning, before the Bhagavatam class, everyone had their rounds chanted. And if you didn't get your rounds chanted in the morning, then it was always difficult. And like I was just asking Mother G, encouraging her that she can give up her, um, try to give her rounds done in the morning. Because those rounds that you do in the night, in the afternoon, you're just kind of forcing yourself because you want to get them done. But they're not really conscious. Right? So Prabhupada always taught us to, to say, like some people say, I, I chanted 33 rounds, I chanted 36 rounds, I chanted 40 rounds. But how did you chant those 40 rounds? So he taught us to chant 16 good rounds. Good rounds. And so he always taught us also to get our rounds done in the Brahma Muhorta hours. The Brahma Muhorta hours. So I, did, I found, like in my life, because I have five children and I had to get them up, the only way I could keep my sanity was to get up early before Mughalati and get at least half done. And after Mughalati, another half done. And then I put them to sleep at 6.30, because they were young, and get them up at 6.30. So they had good sleep, they had good consciousness, I never, never remember having crying children that they didn't want to get up. They got up automatically because I made sure they had good sleep, right? So, like in the same way, we're trying to regulate ourselves, but we're also regulating our children because we're teaching by example. So that's very important. But. Into, as, as far as wanting to do it, each one of us has to fly our own kite. Right? I call that the same. Fly your own kite. Right? No one can make you love Krishna. No one. Krishna's there in your heart. And you can turn to him any, more, any moment and talk with him. Prabhupada used to see Krishna. Right? So, I can tell you as much as I, I can, but in the end, it's up to you, right? After a while, I won't tell you anymore. I already told you every time I come here that get up and try. And everything, if you do this, if you, and Krishna sees that you are serious, then the obstacles will become less. Maya will stop because Maya, she's testing you because she's, she's Krishna's greatest devotee and she tests you to make sure that you're not going to give Krishna any trouble. Right? That's why she sends these obstacles. Look at that fellow, you know? He thinks that he can go to my Krishna without making any effort? No, I'll put this obstacle in his path. And she's testing us all the time to make sure that we're sincere. Right? Any good. 
You can't go to the um, Prabhupada always use that example. You can't just decide I'm going to see the the president of America and just walk in the front door of the White House and say, I want to see the president of America. They will get you by the arm and throw you out, right? So no one is greater than Krishna. The president of America, the president of China, the president of, of anywhere. Not even they can see Krishna. They have to do something pretty good to see Krishna, right? So it's like that. If you want to see Krishna, you have to show Krishna that you really, really, really want to see him. Right? So when you chant those rounds, you chant nice rounds, good rounds. Don't have to chant 30, 40, 50 rounds. You chant 16 good ones. 16 good ones. You listen, and the devotees would ask Prabhupada, how, how should we chant Prabhupada? He said, you listen to every word. So, Hare Krishna, Hare. You hear yourself, you test yourself. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. You listen to yourself. And in that way, the mind is somewhat under control. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's 25 to 8. Every time when I, I think I'm, last night was pretty good actually. We did a fair bit and we got the prasadam distributed and everything. And I was home at my place by about 5 past 8, which is very good. Because yeah. there's always something you've got to do, isn't it? Okay, I think that's enough for tonight. Oh, one more. Yesterday you spoke about the. Yesterday you spoke about the Prabhupada saying, Keep with your kindness. See what happens with me when I fly in airplanes, it takes me a It takes me a bit of time to hear. Mataji, yesterday you said, uh, Prabhupada has told, kill with your kindness. Yes. Be kind. Be kind. So, when we are kind, it is sometimes misused. You? Someone you meet on the street? Yeah, many a times it happens. Is it a devotee? Yeah, it happens in the, uh, like when we preach to children also. Like oh, parents, yeah. we are very kind to parents. Very first of all, children. we give them, yeah, first of all, we give the teaching what we give them, it is free of cost. So they expect everything from us, everything practically. Yeah. So, so sometimes the kindness is misused. When, so, it, when it comes to children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I have a grandson, mm -hmm. and I swear, from the moment he popped out of the womb, he didn't like me. I try to be so nice and he goes, oh, not like a, <laughs> he can just turn his head and he growl and go, no, go away, like that. This went on for years and now he's seven years old and when I ring, I ring from overseas, he actually talks to me, but it's taken a long time, but I just have to be very, very detached from him. But he's actually a very naughty boy. I used to chase him, have to chase him around with the wooden spoon because he was so naughty. And he'd jump over the couches and under and laugh. Always laugh, right? And because, because sometimes he would be very mean to his mother. I said, listen to you. You're not going to treat my daughter like that. I said, watch out. And he knew I was going to get the wooden spoon. So. But it's taken a long time to ever to get. And he can be a very good boy. I took him on the, his sister and him on the hurry now in the, the Gold Coast. And first of all, because I thought they may be a little hungry. So it was like an hour and a half 
ride from their house to the golf course. So I said, okay, we're going to have something at Govinda. So I gave them some kofta, just to tease them. And then I said, after the Harina, you can have whatever you like, right? And so the, the granddaughter, she was in one of her moods, and she didn't want to do anything. I'm tired, I'm sick, you know, when we're going on the Harina. So I'm like, okay, well, you just go and sit over there in the park, and I'm gonna go on Harina with the devotees. And my, my grandson, he was, Quite good. And then after a while she came up, oh, I didn't want to stand there because someone might come and get me. And I said, yeah, well, there's a possibility. And then we got to the end. Oh, well, after some time, I actually had to say to the devotees, I'm sorry, I led the kirtan for one. I have to go now because my granddaughter's, you know, being a grouch. And, and, and my grandson said, oh, I didn't do that, Grandma. I, I followed along with the devotees. I didn't even be naughty one time. And I said, yes, you are, you are very good. You know? But it, he's seven now. So it's like, since he's a baby, to now that he's starting to get better. So I guess you just got to tolerate. And they're going to grow, and finally they'll get over it. He's actually, you know, actually, at school, he is the best, best boy in the school. The teacher, she tells us, oh, I have all these very naughty at home, but at school, he's the best boy in the, in the class. And we go, well, why is he so naughty at home? Because that familiarity, that familiarity creeps in with anyone. That's why you have to be very careful. Because Prabhupada told us that Familiarity breeds contempt. I don't like people getting too close. I don't mind, you know, I need a hand with the, with the um, going up the stairs or getting up. But when they start dragging me, <laughs> like I'm their possession, I'm an old lady, come here, do this, do that, and I go, Whoosh! no more. Because I'm quite capable of, capable of looking after myself. Sometimes I have trouble with the leg, you know? So you have to be... Like one day, Prabhupada was washing his own clothes, and the servant came in and he went, Prabhupada, why are you washing your clothes? He said, you must be as independent as possible. Right? You can let people do things for you, but no, when there's no one there to do it, that you can still do it. You can still wash your clothes, you can still make your bed, that you can still do everything. So one must be as independent as possible. Don't become uh, dependent on people and don't become too attached. Because actually at the time of death, who is there? Who's there? Actually, it's only Krishna in you. Only Krishna in you. You can't call, call out to someone, come and help me. I'm dying. Come and help me. No, because and that's why it's good to have like a, a relationship with God, with Krishna, that you talk to him like your best friend. So when it comes to the time of death, a very difficult time, so you can talk to Krishna and say, Krishna, here I am. They've all gone out of the room. I can hardly talk. I can't yell out, please come and help me. But you can whisper to Krishna. Because right? you know he's there, right but near you. Right? So we have to be like that. All the time, knowing wherever we go that Krishna's with us. Because sometimes it's scary out there in that world, right? You have to sing to, very loud to Nishengadev. Has any of you experienced Nishengadev helping you? Yes, yes, all of you? Yeah, you have to know. Nishengadev, Nishengadev, Nishengadev. When we get on the flight, before it takes off, 
like it's running along the runway, and all of a sudden it's going to take off. So immediately you chant the Shingadev prayers for Krishna to protect you. And um, whenever we're in a difficult situation, one time the devotees were in Melbourne and they were doing Harinam. And these big bullies, they came, big, big fellows, and they started beating the devotees. And the devotees got very afraid because they were big men. And then they were, started singing the Shink prayers, and all of a sudden this big roar happened. <laughs> like this. And the guys, they heard it, and they all ran off. And the devotees said, Did you hear that roar? And they said, Yes. So they all knew that the Shingadev had come to help them. And those fellows, they all ran away. Right? So it's true. We, it's not fictionary. Lord Nishingadev is there. Jagannath Sabhadra Dev, Dev are there. Gwadhitaya is there. Radha Birdhari are there. Right? When you go up to them each day, talk to them. Say, I, I like to say, oh my God. Krishna and Radharani, you look so beautiful in, in those colors. You know, because, isn't it? Particular days, they just look so stunning. And my favorite color is yellow, of course. I don't know if you noticed that. Yellow and purple. But you, know, you talk to Krishna, you talk to him, oh, you look so beautiful today. He's our best friend. Oh, was it dead? Oh, I was over at the hospital today. I had to do a little something. And this lady came and she had light green and pink. I said, you know that color looks really beautiful on you. Oh, she comes. Oh, thank you so much. You know? You see? People become happy. That's what Prabhupada said, kill with kindness. Like, say something nice. Does it hurt you to say something nice? No. Like the man who came to me and said, you look absolutely beautiful on that sari. And then he, I got the opportunity to talk to him and he was saying, please tell me why you wear these clothes, because I'm a Hare Krishna. And immediately he went, oh, the windows, right? And then he said, and you have this mark on your face, what does that mean? And I, I said to him, this means that this body is a temple of God. And he said, that is understandable. Now just that small conversation, he remember that. Quite some time you'll remember that. Is so, that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, prasadam time. And this is prasadam kram.